Good morning, Rabbi Isai. Ah, you didn't I have to tell you, ten Israelis make a much better ah than fifty Americans. Okay, it's a shvach shvach oilim today. Good. Yeah, come sit, sit. Who's in America? Avi and Noam. I don't know where Avi. Avi Avi's not feeling so well. Rabbi Isai, it's great to be back. Yishkoyach for all the Mazel Tov wishes. Yishkoyach for uh, missing me. I missed you. Rabbi Isai, here we go. This is in a random show somewhere. I don't even know where this is. But two people learning the daf. So yesterday I realized that it's, it's on smartphones. But in America it's Peseder. You know, it goes. Over here, in Eretz Yisrael, you'll never see somebody like this with a smartphone. I mean, Barabim. <laughs> <laughs> Donnie Fine sent me this picture. I think Donnie saw this on something. On uh, Where is this? Peninsula Boulevard in the Five Towns. In the Five Towns. Here's another Tesla. But this, Israel Shalitsky writes that by his son's chasen in the hotel, if you take a look at the shampoo, the the brand name is Apoitike. <laughs> Apoitike. And here's he sent me uh, a video of Gidi Libu with his brother. Um, and this is what Yidi Lubitz's brother has to say. We'll put on the volume here. Your brother, I learned every day. So what do you mean? He says, since your brother passed away, I was aware. I never heard from Eliu then, I mean, like two years ago. And I was aware about it. And since then, I started learning, and I never missed a day. He says, I want to thank you. I was very strange to Gamuda before. Never learned anything. But I got very moved, and, and I got hooked on rebellion. You know, the rest of this year. Thank you so much. Just go ahead. Hi, Rebelli. I'm a fan of yours, one of many that gives an Omad Yomi in Yiddish in the Kloisenberg Shul in Lakewood. There are a few times that Shir members asked if I would be able to show diagrams, etc., similar to what you show on your Shir. The Shir I'll be giving today on Brachas Daf Nun Tes is particularly important as we'll be learning a bit about Mazalus and Cheshman of Kiddush Hachamo. Is there a way they can share the PDFs that you worked so hard to prepare? While you're alive. How bad would that be? Thanks. Usher Rosenberg. All the best, Usher Rosenberg. So I don't know exactly how it's done. I know that there's... Shalom Aleichem. So we, let's uh, say hello to the guests. Shalom Aleichem, what's your name? Chaim Shur. Chaim Aleichem. Not a guest, but a guest. What's your name? Vineyard? Oh, Moshe Ben Yair, getting older. Where are you from? Toronto. Toronto. Isn't the doctor here? For, oh, the doctor's from Toronto. Very nice. Also not such a guest. Um, yeah, so uh, oh, we were talking about the PDFs. You'll say what, on the app? The app, I think the app, was the app up and running in Brachas? Everything's back there. So all the PDFs should be on the app. Where else can you get it? That's the best way. That's the best way. On the app. The MDY app. The Coil of the Month Nun. The Mesech, the sponsor for the unity of Am Yisrael. Shom Aleichem Hillel. Parnas HaChoydish. Le'inich Mazachai Ben Moshe. Le'inich Mazachai Bas Yosef. Parnas HaChoydish. Aaron Freeman should be his host to rebellion for continuous. He had the Shemayim teaching Torah to Klai Yisrael. Parnas HaChoydish. Mazel Tov Aaron. Ooh. It's a whole month? That I didn't have. Mazel Tov Aaron, Reveli, and the entire Mishpach on the birth of Sophia Ruth. Her name is Sophia, Sophia Alich is based on Sophia, like the vision. Ruth. Sophia Ruth. Sophia Ruth. Ruth. I don't know about the Ruth part. Say it Parnas Hayoim, Israel and Stephen Perlich. Yard said of Shlomari ben Yisrael by Levi Blech. Our Naomi Mandelbaum, in memory of Avi Mandelbaum, who would be commemorating in honor of? It says IMO. Okay, in honor of Avi Ma- No, not in honor of. In memory. 
in memory of Avi Mandelbaum, who would be commemorating. Sure, you want me to say this? No, not anymore. Not up there. Okay, who will be commemorating Chuck Yeager's birthday today? <laughs> that was Avi. Huh? That was Avi. Okay, that was Avi. He would also say that he loves soup. Okay. <laughs> David Feinberg. Shalom Aleichem. Day. One. Rabbi Isai, listen to this. David Feinberg is here today. Day 1501 of doing the daf since Brachas daf Beis. In honor of 1500 days since Brachas daf Beis. The Nishmas Gershin couple Ben Zeva Levi and Shakayach. Wow. Did anybody know that? 1,500 days. It's insane. Unbelievable. Huh? Nope. <laughs> That's when you say double tachnon. 1,500 days ago, we moved into this base medrash. 1,500 days ago, there wasn't no bookcases. There's no lights. There's no windows. There's no windows. They had, huh? We didn't have a floor? I don't remember what we had. We had, we had, um, we had like these, um, what do they call them? Those projectors that gave very poor lighting. We had a big sign behind the Mazel Tov and the Siyum. We had a iPhone on the table taking the shear. So when somebody moved it, it was on a plastic table. So when somebody put their hand down, the whole thing started shaking. <laughs> the fourth sponsor for today by Mayor DJ Taki, who's over here. Yossi, Shlomo, Daniel, Yona, and Sruli. In honor of the birth of a girl to Meira and Shamshi Shlafrak. Oh, no, he's here last night with his father. May they be Zoycha to raise her and all their children to a life of Torah, Chupa, and Maisim Toivim. Now, I have one aura here. I hate to say this, Taki, you're here. But if Mayor, DJ, Taki, Yossi, Shlomo, Daniel, Yona, and Shruli get together to sponsor, it should be for a whole month. What are you, a bunch of cheapskates? Each guy chipped in three and a half dollars? Taki, what is going on with you? The art of the month, anonymous for the schos, for an easy childbirth, his daughter, healthy baby. Now that guy that sent me an email, you don't have to send about that. That's fine. Reboi say. It's only 17 days to Masechtas of Baba Metziah. And I realized, I saw that they ordered very few Gemaras, maybe like 400 Gemaras. So I called Nisanal, I said, Nisanal, I miss a story. I called him last night at 12 o'clock. I said, what's going on here? He said, no, we don't have money. This I said, no, no, no. No matter what, I, we need at least a thousand people to join Baba Metziah. It's Baba Metziah, right? What kind of business is this? He's going to drop the ball on us. What? The boys, if anybody wants to step up, I don't know. He didn't, he didn't answer me. I wrote him. I asked him the question today. If somebody sponsors like $5,000 or so, we could put your name in the front of the Gemara. I don't think it's too late. I know they ordered already. Is it too late? Tomer might know. One more, but when will it come? Do it today, Rabbi Isai. I know, and especially if you had trauma on Cheder. And Bob is not your Masechta. Let's get these people out of the trauma. Let's do a, a punk fakir. You'll be the sponsor. We've got to get a thousand people to join Bob Huh? Well, are here I know, but they, they can help other people join. All right, Rabbi Isai, we're holding the Fkuf Gimel all the way on the bottom of the Fkuf Beis and Beis. We had a story here, Tona Rabbanon, like 10 lines from the bottom. We're not going to start there. I'll just say about Peh. If somebody buys real estate from somebody else and he feels like he has to use somebody else's name in the contract, if he uses, you know, he writes Donald Trump in there, oh, be married. nobody's going to bother him. So the, 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 the head of the, whatever it is, the Rej Galusa, somebody really chashuv that, I'm not saying that he's chashuv, but somebody important that nobody's going to start up, nobody's going to be ma'ar on the field or whatever it is, Yerusha's this, that, there shouldn't be any fights. He goes, he makes him a little bit of a boo-boo. He puts somebody else's name in there. He figures if he puts somebody else's name, it'll help him out. Then he has Harata. He wants it on his name. He wants to give it over. Shamshi, talking about Shamshi and the baby last night, he told me a Misa. You could stick it in over here so I don't forget. 
he, he knows somebody from work that he was having some issue with the real estate, I don't know, tax, I don't know what it was. So he put his own property, bought a house, he bought, he asked his father, he could put it on his name. He says, sure, help out the son. And then they both were nifter. The father and the son were nifter. And the other sons want the house. Now, the grandchildren, they're saying, it's our father's house. He just put it on Zadie's name because he had some issue, technical issue. It's not Zadie's house. He said, no, it's on his name. We're going to take it. We want it. So now this guy realizes it's not good, not so good to have the Rish Golis' name. So he wants, he wants to change the name. So it says like this. Holding by the Seifa, Elayim Seifa. Three lines from the bottom. Almanas. But if the guy comes along and says, I'm buying this field, I'm buying this real estate on condition that Donald Trump changes his name eventually. I'm going to write now Donald Trump. Donald Trump has no clue. He's over there in New York somewhere. I'm going to write Donald Trump. People see Donald Trump, they'll, be, they'll run away. But in a month from now, I want you to write me a new star that says Ellie on it. Okay. Then we go to Donald Trump. We say, listen, Donald, you got a problem. You, uh, you, you appear as the owner in Bet on a piece of property. We need you to switch your name. Am I? Why should he do it? What kind of bush is this? A bazaar? You, you, you're making me sign? Like, who? I don't know. I don't know who you are. Why, you, why, you, why should I get involved there? Besides, I'm a type of person. I never sell any real estate. Right? People are extremely wealthy. They don't like to sell. I have uh, I told you about this guy. Unfortunately, I partnered up with a guy, a billionaire. Doesn't want to sell. I have nowhere I, I can't go, I can't move forward. Stuck. We don't, I don't sell. It's a boosher for me to sell. Not that he said that, but that, that's what I mean. I, so much money. Why do I need to sell? I just hold on to it forever. It's Zilu Saichu. The, uh, I think it's a medrash. This is the guy, if not, it's a great story. A guy was walking down the street. I remember seeing it in like a Musr Sefer. I don't know, like Archa Sadikim. I don't know what. Somebody will write in. A guy was walking down the street in the middle of the night. Come to police and they grab him and they start beating him up. So what are you doing here? You're probably trying to steal. So he starts screaming, leave me alone. I'm the king's uh, cousin. What are you doing? So they, they, they stopped beating him up. He said, okay, we're going to find out. If we find out, you're not. So the next morning, they bring him into the king. He said, your majesty, you recognize this guy? He says, no. Remind me how we're related. So the guy says, listen, we're not related. But these guys were beating me up. The only way out of it was to say that I'm related to you. And they stopped pitting me. So the king said, oh, you're using my name to, to save you? Okay, that, let, leave him alone. That's... It's already a, it's a schos, it's a covet for me. Well, also this guy is using the king's name, he's the Rosh Golos, for his, for his sake. Sometimes, yeah, sometimes it's a, sometimes, but you know what? Don't force me to come now to, to court and start signing documents. That not. I'm just saying, why would a person do it? Sometimes a person does it for, for covet. Hello, my rabbi. Okay, come on. So what's Pshad in this, in this Gemara? We had, it, was, it was a very hard sentence to begin it. Halikeach all the way in the beginning. Halikeach sadeh b'shem chaveri and koyven oisid limkar. If somebody buys a field with somebody else's name, we don't force the guy. But if he says almanas, then we force him. But the Gemara says, why should we force somebody that's not even involved in the sale? Hello, Rabbi, you're right. We don't force the rich gullos. We don't force Donald Trump to do anything. We're talking about the seller. Should he write another document? Hello, Rabbi, you're right. Halikeach sadeh b'shem chaveri, b'shem rich gullos. So let's say. We don't force the seller to write another document. That makes sense. Why should the seller write another? You lied to the seller. The seller thought he's selling it to Donald. And now you're coming to him a week later and say, oh, no, no, it was really me. That's it. I, don't, I didn't get paid for this. You bought it for me. I did my job. Shalom Yisrael. But if he made a condition with him, I'm an ass. You should know I'm writing now, Donald. Tomorrow I'm going to come to you and I'm, we're going to write another star. Beseder, yes. Now that's also no chiddush at all. Why would I think that he has to do, that he has to write another 
shtar, if you already wrote a shtar. Mal the same in Matzi Omer Lei. I think, may the Yodas da Anon Lam Shoisha Kilno. You should have known. There's a certain understanding over here. Why am I writing somebody else's name here? Upanchi Yobal Mohu, the Kavino, the Kavino. I'm just doing some sort of trick. I'm trying to save my property. I don't want other people to come and, and take it from me. So I wrote a, a very a very famous name in there or something. You know that I'm just I'm not throwing away money. You know that I didn't buy it for the Rosh Golas. I bought it for myself. You see, I'm struggling here to get a mortgage and this and that. What do you think I wrote the Rosh Golas' name? To save me. You should have understood this. I thought I was sure that you understand what's going on. Are you going to write me another star? Come on. No. Yeah, yeah, I saw something fishy going on here. I thought you're doing a deal with Donald. You're going to go to Donald at that. You're not going to come to me. I'm not to write, to you, write you another star. I did what I had to do. I don't need to understand all your shtick and what you, what you meant to do. What not, you didn't speak it out. I don't have to do it again. But if he specified, I could also say, I'll buy your field on condition that you do 25 jumping jacks. I'm allowed to make any condition I want. So if I made a condition that you're going to write me another star, Pshita, of course, you have to write another star. What's the Chiddush? He didn't really specify it. What he did was he said in front of the Edim, you should know, I'm, I'm like a Moiser Moida sort of. I'm, I'm telling you right now, we're signing a document now, we're signing a deed. In a week from now, I'm coming back to you guys, we're going to write another one. Say it there. Now, he, he didn't really explain who. He didn't say who. He says, I, I need another star. From who? From Donald or from the seller? The, the seller could say, Oh, I didn't understand. I, I, I thought you meant that Donald is going to write another star. No, that's why I was matriach myself and I said in front of you, in front of the witnesses, I want to write the star from you. Raboy said that's the end of the sugya. Moving on to the next sugya. Says Gemara, interesting story. Rav Kahano, you have Zuzo Akitono. Rav Kahano gave a thousand dollars to the flax guy. Here, take a bunch of money for Pishta. And he didn't pick it up. He didn't take it. He left it by the guy. He's the dealer. When I need it, I'll come take it. Lesoif, we're going to see exactly what the story was. Why did he do it and how he did it? Lesoif, yakir kitono, the price of the pishton, the flax went up. So this guy was, look, look, he's a pretty decent guy. He's a nice guy. He wanted Rav Kahana to make a nice, a nice amount here. It was, let's say doubled in price, the Gemara says. Zabni marvasa de kitono. He sold it all. He sold the, the flax. What kind of problem could this be, Rabbi Isai? What kind of issue is this? Who said? Why is the rivers? He put in $1,000 and the guy's giving him $2,000. He never picked up his flax, garnished. Huh? Even, I don't know. I'm saying, what, I'm asking, what could the problem be? You're saying it's not a problem with rivers? Did he make a Kenyan here? Did he not make a Kenyan? It already exists, but he didn't make, did he, did he, did he do Mashiach on it? Did he do Akbar? What did he do here? Yeah. Okay. So let's see what the problem is. First of all, there's another problem. Nobody said this one. How did the guy have the right to sell it? He didn't call him up, say, hey, you can make a, maybe the guy doesn't want me to sell, maybe Afghan doesn't want it to be sold. Maybe Afghan wants the, the Pishta. Gival de Kamaisa, a guy comes to the, the marketplace, he comes a couple of hours earlier than everybody else. You know, one of these guys, when I was a caterer, there's like always like one or two people, he'd show up like an hour before the wedding. Show him Aleichem, here I am. And they were like, right away, where's the food? Oh, class is not starting. It's always like, you know, like a real, somebody that has a lot of time on his hand. And the guy shows up to the, to, the, to the marketplace, he looks around, nobody's there. And to his luck, it starts a tremendous snowstorm. Tremendous. And what happens is, all the guys, the horses and buggies, they can't, they can't show up. He's the only guy there. 
with, with a lot of merchandise. But the buyers start rolling in, and he's the only guy there with the big buggy. He thought he's going to make 10,000 ruble. Comes the guy and says, listen, I see there's nothing going on here. I'll, I'll offer you 15,000 ruble for your stuff. So he chaps what's going on. He says, no, 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 no deal. Comes another guy, I'll give you 20, 30. He's flying. He's like, wow, I've, uh, unbelievable profit. Kid, so he says, you know what? I'm going to wait till tomorrow. Next day, somebody comes and offers him 40, 50, garnished. He's not, he says, you know, if it's going like this, can you imagine tomorrow, 100,000? Kid, so he goes to sleep, wakes up in the morning, and there's hardly any snow left. It starts, it starts to melt. And sure enough, as the marketplace is coming, all of a sudden the, the horses and buggies start pulling in one after another. So he goes to the guy, no, you want 50? No, 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 no. 40, 30, t- nobody wants his stuff even. That's it, he's left with garnished. The garnishment nished. What's the nimshal? The nimshal is that we, right now, we're in a very big snowstorm. This is our time to chaparain, chaparain another yid, but mitzi is coming up. Most of the neshamas, they're up there, they're not chapping anything. Whatever they did, they did. We're in a snowstorm. In a snowstorm. Zog the Gemara, Zabni Marvasa the kid, was a tremendous profit. Mamish doubled. He sold it off. Also the Kamei the Rav. So Rav Kahan has a big problem on his hands. Could he take the profit or not? Omalei Mevid, what should I do? Ezel Ishkel Zuzoi, could I take the money? Could I take my big profit? Omalei, it depends. Says Rav, it depends. When they sold it, they announced, I'm selling Rav Kahana's pishton. I'm selling his flax. Okay, so the guy that bought it knows that it's for Rav Kahana. So the money was given basically for Rav Kahana. He was just the, the shliach in between, the, the go-to guy, the in-between guy. Viloy. But if they don't announce it, you're not allowed to take the money. Oh, Kiman. So, Gemara is going to go into this now. What, what's going on here? What's the problem? So, yesterday we learned, we saw a shita from Eretz Yisrael that the seller needs to know who he's, who he's giving the, who's, who's, Who's about Dover over here? So, who told the Balchitim, she yak nechitim lebal mois? Who told him who to do the Kenyan to? So now, is that what Rav meant? That they need to know exactly who it's going to? Rav Kahana didn't want to do business. Rav Kahana didn't want to give four to take eight. He wasn't trying to do uh, a ribbis deal here. He wanted the flax. And it went up in price anyway, by itself. The guy that sold it had no right to sell it. He's a gazlan. Now, even though he meant the, the, for the right thing, what? What? Oh, let's see. We'll see. So, maybe he did. I don't know. But at this point, the guy took the money for Afghana. There's understanding he's going to give him this pishton. In fact, he, he even called him up. He said, listen, I made a deal for you. But in terms of Hilchas Gzela, he did the wrong thing. Yeah, he was trying to do the right thing, but he shouldn't have sold it without his permission. So if he's a gazlan, what does a gazlan pay? Usnan, kol gazlan misham kishas gzela. Whatever it was worth at the time of the sale. How much was it worth at the time of the sale? Double the price. He sold it at a profit. Meaning he has to pay. So... All he's doing is, the guy that sold the flax is just paying Rav Kahana back what he deserves. It's not a, it wasn't a, a loan, and then he, he paid him double for the loan. He's just giving him the money he received for the, the pishton. It says, Gemara Amri. I'll explain to you what's going on. Oh, somebody just wrote to me an email that he did a, a search, and it comes up like five, six hundred times, the word Amri, Baba Kahn alone. So I've been, how much? 612. One less than 613, that's what he wrote? Ah, 612. It's a tremendous amount of times. <laughs> that you should have, Ari, you know, Amri, no, I'm saying, like, you know, you know so many messages about pet. You should have noticed this, that it's not, am I right? That it's not, it doesn't come up in other, 
It's just interesting that it's here all the time. Amri, they said, Oh, you see what it says here? So, Amona is a new word for us. Amona means that Rav Kahana gave him money before he even had any merchandise. The guy didn't have any pishton. He's a pishton, he's a flax dealer. Right now he didn't have one piece of flax in his inventory. Rav Kahana gave him money. He gave him $1,000. He said, every month give me, I don't know, $80 worth of pishton, whatever comes out. He gave him $1,200 every month, give me $120 worth of pishton. For the price that pishton is today, so you go to the market, how much, for 120 bucks, you get a pound of pishton, okay? You get a box of pishton. So that's what I want. Now, if the price goes up, the price is locked in. So the, the seller, the seller doesn't care. Why? Because the, 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 the guy that sells it to Afghanistan doesn't care. He gets his $1,200 today. He could go today to the market and buy $1,200 worth of pishton and give it to Afghanistan when he wants. Or he could decide, I'm going to take the money and, and put it in the stock market. I'm, I'm going to make a fortune. He knows that right before Pesach, the prices shoot up to the sky. He, know, he doesn't care. Every month, he's going to give him the same amount of pishton for the locked in price of today. Oh, now the question is, when that month comes that the pishton goes, triples in price, does he have the option to give him a box of pishton? For the, for the triple price? Or what if he doesn't want to give him pishton? He's like, give him, I'll give him money. I'll give him cash. Instead of 120 bucks, I'll give you 360. Three times the cash. Says Rav, oh. V'rav that I made all my Rav, oisin amon beperes. I could give a person money today. It's not ribbis. I'm giving him today. It's his option to buy it all today. If he wants, he could save the money, put it in a bank account, and lose money, and then buy it at the higher price, and give me that, that amount tomorrow. That I could do as long as he gives me payers. Rav is of the opinion that he cannot give him the money instead of the fruit. And Mamela says, Rav to Rav Kahana, if nobody announced your name, then it's an amana. It's you gave there was trust here, you gave the money up front, right? That's what happened. Rav Kahana gives the, the seller money up front. Comes a seller and says, I want to give you double the cash. Instead of giving you pishton, I want to give you double the cash. Rav says he can't do that. However, if there was a sale, says Rav, if you actually sold Rav Kahana's pishton, you're not giving him cash because you didn't buy the flax. You're giving him cash because you took the flax and you sold it to somebody else for the other price and you announced it. You said, this is Rav Kahana's flax, I'm selling it to you. And the money goes from you to Rav Kahana. I'm just... The intermediary, what's the word? Uh, whatever, something like that. Okay, you fi- finish. Yeah? You're the shliach in between. I'm the agent. I'm taking money from you and I'm giving it to Rav Kahana. So that's not ribas. Yes, it's double the price. But I, I made a sale for Rav Kahana. I sold it to you. But that's only if I mention and I say, not because of the Gemara that we had yesterday that the, the seller has to know who he's selling it to, etc. Over here, it's because otherwise it's an amana, and amana Rav says you're not allowed to take money instead of you're not allowed to return money a higher amount than what you received in money. But if you make a sale, you could receive that extra money. Says the Halig Mishnah, sponsored by Moshe Cohen, schus a tremendous haslacha in Ruchnius and in Gashmis. Hagoyzel chaveri shove pruto. Somebody steals a pruta, right? So that's the minimum. And he swore that he didn't steal. So here's the Pasuk. It says, We're going to see, we're going to see the full Pasuk later. But right now, what's important is more the gazel part. A person steals and he denies it and he swears falsely. So there are three steps he has to take. If he swears falsely, if he doesn't swear falsely, he returns it. But if he swears falsely, they never stole it. So what does he do? Number one is, You have to return the principal. Number two, You have to add a fifth. 
So if he stole $100, he has to add $25, which we call a quarter. But when you have $1.25, then the quarter becomes a fifth. So he adds a fifth. And in addition to that, Pastor Chofei says, if it's me, you have to bring a carbon. So Chofei is a carbon. Oh. So, if he has to return this money, he has to go all the way to Modai to, to, to pay him back. By the way, Modai is MDY, in case you stop. Yeah, it's... You have to go all the way to the end of the world in order to pay back the Gneva. The famous Maisa with Rebbe Khan of Wasserman, he, he came from Europe, he used to come all the time from Europe, to the United States. Everybody knows that he was in the United States when the war broke out and he chose to go back and he died al-Kiddush Hashem. He wanted to be with his Talmidim. But you can imagine going from Europe to the United States. It's not, oh, I sat in the middle seat in coach, Nebuch. <laughs> you have to take a bunch of trains until you get to the port. In the port, you take the, the, the ship all the way to this, another two, three weeks on the ocean. Kids, so you get there, right? You know what I'm talking about. It's, it's not, not a cruise, bus fire cruise. You're talking about a wooden boat, something. Kitzer, he gets to, to America and it's not going well. So what does Talmudim says, listen, there's a guy here that owns textile, the largest textile company, but there's good news and bad news. The bad news is that nobody's ever seen a dollar from this guy. Stingiest guy in town. No, no, what else, what, what else could be wrong? He says, oh, and the other thing is that he used to be a from Shemir Tari, but is, he's now, he's lay lay and he's off the derech. He says, so what could be the good news? <laughs> so the good news is that he, he learned with you in the same class back in Europe. Oh! He says, Rebukhanan, okay, I, I need to go see this guy. So he goes, he goes to the guy, Shalom Aleichem, and he's schmoozing with him, schmoozing, schmoozing. Finally, the guy says, no, no, what are you doing here? Why are you in America? He says, why am I in America? Don't laugh at me, but Lemaisa, my button for my kapata keeps on popping off. And I went to a bunch of guys in, in, in Europe and they put it back on, you know, the wind, the this, Baruch Hashem, pop, it pops off all the time. So I came here to, so I heard that you have an unbelievable textile company. Maybe one of your guys could sew back on. He says, no, 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 seriously. Says, I'm serious. I came from Europe. He says, what, you went four weeks on the ocean, this, the, no. I'm not Meshuggah. Tell me what you came here. He says, oh, you don't understand why I came here for a button, but you came to this world for shtusim. You came all the way from there for nothing. How do you explain that? Uh, and then kids, nine months later, he came to Chuva. <laughs> and he donated to MDY. Anyways, <laughs> now, in order to be Yaitza, you're not allowed to give it to the kid. Maybe if the kid gives it to the father, you'll be yoytza. But at that point, when you give it to the, the guy's son, you're not yoytza v'ezer z'gzeh. V'loy l'shluchay. Now, v'loy l'shluchay doesn't mean you have to, that you have to understand. Somebody asked me last night, and I wasn't clear about it, but now, Baruch Hashem, because he asked me. V'loy l'shluchay doesn't mean his shliach, because shluchay shalom k'moyse. You could give it to a shliach. It means, don't give it to a guy, hey, give it to him, like, an un, a unofficial shliach, we'll see more of it on Davkov Gidal. Avanois in the shliach bezdi. This is a special halacha. This won't make sense on its own. I could give it to Bezdin, but the guy lives in Africa. What do you mean give it to Bezdin? But Bezdin, Chacham made it a kana, you can give it to Bezdin. Ve'im base, and if the guy that was stolen from dies, Yachz of the Yarshim, you give it back to his Yarshim. Nasan leis ha-keren, v'loy nasan leis ha-choymesh. All the mission is saying now is the main thing is the Karen. we don't care about the Chaymesh. Well, you have to travel really far is for the, for the principal. So, Nosan Lisa Karen, if he paid back the Karen, Veloy Nosan Lisa Chaymish, he didn't pay back the fifth. Machaloy Allah Karen, Veloy Machal Allah Chaymish, or he was Moichal him on the Karen. So, once he's Moichal the principal, I don't have to travel, but he wasn't Moichal the Chaymish, that's not important. Machaloy Alzev Alzev, if he was Moichal both on the principal, on the Karen, Chutz me Bakhz Bashar Pruta, but he left three cents, that's not important. Chutz Bashar Pruta by Karen, Ain it's Achle Allah Chaymish, you don't have to go to Mother. But the principle is very important. So if you paid back the Chaymish, not the principle. 
Okay. He left a full prut in there. Okay. What if he paid back the hundred dollars but not the twenty-five? Daf Kuv Gimelam and Bay sponsored by Greg Haber for the success and say return of all the hostages and the Chayelim Schos for Klai Yisrael. So, Harazim Misham Choymesh Al Choymesh Achi Ismait Akerim Mishav Pruta. So, if the fifth is twenty-five, and he lied about the twenty-five, he swore the second shvur. First shvur is I didn't I didn't steal the hundred. And then he wants to do tshuva, so he pays 125. But he didn't pay 125, he only paid 100. Now he, does, he feels bad, he has to pay 25. It hurts him. Why should I pay this knot? I swear I paid you. He makes a shua sheker. So he has to pay a quarter of the quarter. 6.25. And then he swore that he even paid the 6.25 and he didn't. That's a third shua. So now he has to pay 1.56. The kids, he keeps on paying a fifth of the fifth. Until whatever the 1.56 is less than a bruta, then he has, then then he doesn't have to do that anymore. Because the chaymish rabbi say becomes the principal. So now, since the principal, since the chaymish is the principal, now you have to travel to Madai for the 25. Before the Mishnah says you don't have to travel anywhere for the 25. It's just the chaymish. It's just the 25 percent. I don't have to. But once you swear on it, now the chaymish becomes a principal. And for that, you have to travel. Now, it doesn't have to be a gneva. It could be he gave it to you to begin with as collateral. As a pikadin. Even for a loan. Sumasiyad is a loan. If you swear on any money, even if it came to you, legitimately, it came to you because he gave you a loan. You lie. You swear on a loan. Pay a fifth. Here, you, you, you stumbled on, on Aveda in the middle of the street, you found somebody's glasses. You swear that you didn't find it. All these things, you always pay the principal plus a fifth, you have to bring a carbon, even if it came to you, through a loan, through a metzia, whatever it is, you have to pay. Says the Gemara, it seems like the only time you travel all the way to the end of the world to Madai is Nishba Loi in. It's if you made a Shvua. It's based on the Shvua. Loi Nishba Loi, but if he didn't swear to him, Loi, you don't have to travel all the way to Madai. Mani, who does our Mishnah go according to? Loi Rebbe Tarfim, Loi Rebbe Kiva. Lachayr, it doesn't go not like Rebbe Tarfim, not like Rebbe Kiva. The Sanya. Gazal, Echem Chamisha, Beni Dem, Meizim, Gazal. Here you go, Rabbi, you see a beautiful picture. <coughs> Guy's on a plane, and he uh, oh, he, he decided to steal whiskey from uh, what's it called the luggage compartment on top. He has no idea who he stole it from. Now he tries to he drank it. Now he tries to return it, and uh, everybody says it's mine. Something like this, I guess. I don't know. Gozalach <laughs> He stole, he doesn't know from who. Well, I said, there's, a, there's a pickpocketer that decided to pickpocket a woman, stole her purse, steals her, her wallet or whatever, comes home, and he notices that his cell phone is gone. So he calls up his cell phone, and this woman picks up. <laughs> says, hello, can I help you? He says, yeah, I'm uh, missing my cell phone. So she says, yeah, and I'm missing my, uh, my wallet. She says, what, what do you mean? She says, yeah, you were pickpocketing me, I pickpocketed you. <laughs> so I'm like, wow, it's not bad, not bad, good job. She says, uh, I need my phone back. I need my wallet back. Kids are, they meet up, and of course, they get married. <laughs> and uh, nine months later, they had a baby boy. This baby boy is born with a mum. He's like this. My mom's like this. So they bring him to the doctors. They try to pull his fingers apart, garnished. So they bring him to the Rav. And the Rav says, well, what's, what's going on? This, that. What do you guys do? She says, I'm a pickpocketer. And he says, I'm a pickpocketer. 
So, ah, okay, I have a He says, give me your necklace. So she gives him, she gives the rub the necklace, and the rub takes the necklace and goes to the baby and goes like this. All of a sudden, the baby opens up his hand, and inside the hand was the ring of the lady that burdened. That was the problem. The Mia Lettuce, how do you say it? <laughs> Nobody la- <laughs> so last night, last night I said the story. Dari was on the floor. I said, watch, I'm going to say the story in English. Not a single person is going to laugh. <laughs> Thank you. Baruch Shekivanti, Niva V'layodam Shiniva, from the time of the Misa Migdash, Nitna Nevoa, L'shoitim. Because how do you say, I don't even know how to say Mia Lettuce in, in English. That's the problem. Oh, Rabbi Isai. So he opened up his hand. And all of a sudden, the ring of the midwife was inside the hand. <laughs> oh. ah, so I'm not a shaita after all. You see, I'm not a shaita. <clears throat> oh, fine. Where are we, Oli? Kitzer, he's a big ganav. He doesn't know from who he stole. Who knows what Yosef is going to do here? I'll just take out the laughing part. <laughs> he puts down the bottle of whiskey and runs away. It's a big chiddush. Says, Divi Reb Tarfin. Reb Tarfin says that all you need to do is put it down and run. Reb Kiva Oimer, Loizu Aderech, Mutsiyosim de Avera, you're not going to be Yoytza like that. That's to pay a bottle of whiskey to each and every person. Says the Gemara, our Mishnah, that says that if he swore falsely as to go all the way to Madai, Mani. According to Tarfoin, even though that he swore, yeah, even if he swore, he doesn't have to go to Madai. He can just put it down and go away. And Rav Kiva says, forget about Shavuot. It's not even talking about Shavuot. It's talking about without a Shavuot, you still have to pay. This is how you get out of the, this is how you in the mitzvah of Eishvah says, Eilo. Says Gemara, Loilo Rav Kiva. So I just want to point out that this whole Amad, until the top of Kovdal Ramadal, of tomorrow's, you know, seven lines into tomorrow's Daf, it's showing us how the Gemara goes back and forth. How does our Mishnah go? Now, if it was the Shulchan Aruch, we'd say like this. Our Mishnah goes according to Rabbi Kiva and Rabbi Tarfim. It's talking about this in this case, like Rabbi explained. No, the Gemara is taking us on a journey, on a journey to see. It cannot be Rabbi Kiva. It cannot be Rabbi Tarfim. It, it has to be this, it has to be that. It goes back and forth. It's a whole sugi here. E Rabbi Kiva. I've got this time actually. Loyalum says the Gemara, no, it is Rabbi Kiva. When does Rabbi Kiva say you have to pay a bottle of, of whiskey to each and every single guy? It's when Only, you're right. It's talking about in cases of Shua. So our Mishnah does go according to Rabbi Kiva. If you swear falsely, then you go to Madai. If you swear falsely, you have to pay. And you don't know what it is, you have to pay each and every guy. My time up. Where did Rabbi Kiva get this idea from? When he swears falsely, we have to give it to him. When? By Shvua. Yeah, you're right. Even though he swore of the Rabban Takanto, nevertheless, Rabban said you don't have to you don't have to give each and every person, you just put it down and you run. Besides, by the way, it doesn't really mean you put it down and you run. So Rashi points out you give it to the Bezdin and Bezdin takes care of it. Whoever, somebody has to prove. It's not literally put it down and they start fighting it. That's not, he's not going to be Yitzhak like that. Give it to Bezin, give it to Shlir Bezin and Achi Yovo Yignigzal Vietlano until they can prove who they are and how they, how, if they're really the person. The Belzer told me that he, he found 250 shekel in a store. So I, I guess it was folded. So he decided he's going to return it. So he goes, did anybody lose money? And they're looking at him and they could see it's 200 shekel. So five people said, yeah, we, we lost money. That's what he said, five people. He says, how much? He says, come here, how much? 200. 200. And they all said 200. He says, okay, forget it. You know, you have to, you have to prove. You, have to, you can't just say, oh, yeah, 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 Aleichem. It's me. I, I, you stole it from me. It doesn't work like that. You have to prove to Bez and then you can take it. The son of Rebbe Lazar, Rebbe Tzadik Goymer. Says Rabbi Tarifin, look, I'll prove it to you. Chacham made a takana. Takana k'doy l'tkinu shim huysa yitzoy yisir ala keren. 
Imagine, somebody stole something from somebody in Eretz Yisrael, he's now in America, so now he has to take a flight. You know how much flights cost now to go to America? Especially if you find out a half hour before you're leaving. It's like, coach is like uh, thousands of dollars, one way. I mean, I felt like an idiot. The guy sitting next to me paid $3,000 less than me. And I, wasn't sitting, I was not sitting in business, and it was one way. One way. I'm not going to tell you how much I paid for one way. I wanted to get to this kiddush. He booked two weeks ago. But it does, I'm saying there's no... There's, both of my flights, one seat left. That's what they told me. One seat left. They're, whatever. It allows raking it in right now. And Beis Hashem, they're going to put our share on there. The, all this money they're making. They don't know about it, but they should. <laughs> so they made a takana that if it's so much money to go from America to Israel and you only stole $15, they're not going to make you pay $3,000 to, to come uh, pay, pay back. So what do you do? You bring it to Bezdin and you bring your carbon and that's it. That's great if I know exactly what it is. I just, it's hard for me to get there. It's very expensive. Okay. Give it back to the owner. How? Through Bezdin. You put in Bezdin. Somehow, I don't know how, Bezdin contacts that person. Or if somebody's missing something, they go to Bezdin. Hey, Bezdin, do you have anything? Did anybody ever return anything to me? You know, they have those organizations like these things. You go in America, uh, you know, missing money. I forgot what it's called. Like, you just call, hey, by the way, does the government owe me any money? No? Okay. Shkoyach. And then they, okay, whatever. Different story, different time. I'll go upon him. But in, in this case, where there's five people or more, he doesn't know who he stole from. At the end of the day, the owner's not getting his thing back. For him, this Meshuggah, we're not going to make a special Takana. Massive Rav Bar Yehuda. So we're talking about that there was a, he swore. Yeah, we said, according to Rav it must be that he swore. And that's why. He pays each and every one. A different story. A boy say. This is a story of somebody that took it with permission. So I'm thinking a, a great example would be a esrig in the esrig marketplace, right? There's a hundred tables there. Yeah, tell a guy, hey, can I, can I, can I show this esrig to my rabbi? Here, he's right over there. Five minutes later, you come back. Now you're confused. Ooh, did I take it from you, from him? Does this esrig look for me? Yeah, yeah, it's my esrig. Give it to me. And you go to the next guy. No, but I think it's him. Everybody says, yeah, it's their esrig. Now what do you do? You didn't steal it. You had permission to take it. You took it. My father always says this. It's Yiddish. You have to know Yiddish. He says, a chassid once told his Rebbe, Rebbe, I didn't steal it. I took it. So it's a big difference. Not. Over here it is a big difference. Lokach. He had permission to take it. So in that case, even Rebbe Kiva agrees. He puts down the esrog in the middle and walks away. So according to Rashi, he gives it to Bezdin. The money. The money. Yeah, the May Mekach. But whoever it is has to prove it. So where is the the machlaikis is when he stole. She retired from him and he had to make zele b'nei mu mistalik. Rav Kiva Omer in the takana at she shang zele kol echad vechad. The machlaikis is when he stole. Ask the Gemara. We talk about the ishtaba, but we talking about a case. In both cases, they have to be similar. Only when he swore. Do we have a machlaikis between Rav Kiva and Rav Tarif and whether you could put it down in the middle? Mali lokach, mali gazal. So look at this pasuk. Never kishis echtum alom al b'ashem v'kirish b'amisa v'bikan or b'tzum siyad even. When it came to Beheter, when he took a loan. But if he swore falsely, even on something like a Tzumas Yad, something like a loan, so even if he swore falsely when he took the Esrig, he took an Esrig. The guy said, you can take it to the rabbi. And then he swears falsely, he says, I am Nishba, he says, on a, this, he holds whatever he has to hold, and he says, Hashem, I never took an Esrig. So in that case, he has to pay an Esrig, Plus a fifth, plus a carbon. Even though he got it with permission. <coughs> so mali lokach mali gazal. In that case, there shouldn't be any enough committed between Rebbe Kiva and Rebbe Tarvin. Why? He, he took it. Bishvua. So how can you say that we're talking about a shvua here? 
There's a story with the chassid. The Rebbe remembers who chassid echad is. In all of Shas, who's chassid echad? Huh? Does anybody remember where we had a story in this mistechta with Maisa B'chassad Echad? I said then, it's Rabbi Yudha Rabbi Loi. Huh? I don't know what that, what was the story? I'm going to show you, I'll show you the picture, then you'll have. Here you go. Oh. That uh, he was very sick, and they came, the Chacham came to visit him, and he had a, a goat tied to his bed, and they ran away. They said, he, he can't be, he can't be, he's not righteous because he has a goat. Who has a goat in their stroll? And it turns out it's Rabbi Yehuda. Yeah? Who? Uh-huh. <laughs> sure. Yeah, we spoke about it when we saw that Gemara. It was a chassid that he took it with permission, but he forgot who he took it from. Yeah, sometimes you go to a diamond store, you say, hey, can I see this piece of jewelry? I'll bring it to my wife. Then you forget who it is. A lot of money. And it comes to Reb Tarifin. The eight is, you take the jewelry, you put it between the two stores, and you walk away, or according to Rashi, you give it to same story, right? Now, you tell me the 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 of the whole sugya is b'shvua. We're talking about a shvua. How could a chassid? What happened? He swore falsely. That's why. That's why you have to pay each and every person. And you have to bring a carbon and a chaymash and everything. Why? He swore false. No, so what's the, maybe when he was younger, he did something wrong. And later on, he became a chassid. You see from here that a person could be a big chassid, not a today chassid. A chassid of the Mesut Sharm. A chassid, one of the highest levels, right? Chassid. Even if he was Nishbal Shekhar once upon a time, it's not a, everybody can do tshuva and become a chassid. That can't be that when he was younger, he was not a chassid, and later on in his life he became a chassid, so it is talking about that he made a shvur. Anyway, I'm thinking to myself right now, I just thought about this, why would we say maizib chassid echad? Maizib, when he was a young kid, when he wasn't a chassid, he was like, okay, fine. But anyway, let's say that's the story. We know for a fact that they were both Hasidim, they, they, they were born righteous. And this story right over here, I believe, was, we said right then, we, we proved that it was Rabbi Yudah Rabbi from the Mishnah, the famous Rabbi Yudah from the Mishnah. All right, Zakti Gemara, El Elam Rabbi Tarifani. So now we're going through the steps here. We just try to prove that it's Rabbi Kiva, it's not Rabbi Kiva. Maybe it's Rabbi Tarifani. Tomorrow we're going to see that it's both, Rabbi Kiva and Rabbi Tarifani. When he swears falsely, he has to pay each and every person. My time. The is talking about a shvur. And you have to give him. There's no way out of it. You have to give it to him. Now you don't know who him is. You have to give it to each and every one. And you have to even go all the way to Madai if even though you didn't swear, since you don't know who it is. Fine, Rabbi Yisai, we'll stop right over here. Have a wonderful day. Yishkoyach for coming out. Tell your friends that I'm here. I'm back. And tell your friends about Bob Oh, should we do Shir Malas? Let's do Shir Malas. Shir Malas.